Hey guys, I'm here with Mark Chardy at the Hamptons International Film Festival, the producer of the film Big Shot. Um, so tell me a little bit about the film for everyone who hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, well, it's the story of a, of a, of a young uh, owner, a 32-year-old named John Spano, who uh, back in 96 was connected with the New York Islanders. He had kicked the tires on buying a, a couple teams, uh, one in Dallas and one in uh, Florida. Uh, wasn't successful in his bid to land that team, but he was put together uh, with the Islanders when they were put up for sale, and the league had known him from the two previous, you know, attempted ownership runs. And basically, it's this 32-year-old supposed billionaire out of Dallas, Texas, and it's before kind of Mark Cuban and uh, before, you know, probably the internet could really, you know, dig into things. And uh, he pulled off, uh, in my opinion, one of the biggest upsets ever. But uh, Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out, and you know, got within about a week of uh, you know pulling off this this kind of incredible coup uh, or scam, depending how you look at it. But uh, yeah, he uh, w what it was revealed is that he really didn't have any money, and he was kind of you know borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. But a really interesting kind of catch me if you can type of uh, mystery thriller uh, with hockey at the center, and uh, really interesting story. Well, I mean, supposedly, you know, he bought the team for more than a hundred million. It was like around 160 million. His net worth was two million. So my question is, this guy is either a huge charmer or he just, you know, had people invest in him. How did he convince people that he could buy the team? You know, it, he really opens up about that process in 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 the documentary. Kevin Connolly did a great job of uh, reaching out to him and getting him in the chair. He hadn't spoken to anyone about this. He had served some time for this uh, for this event. And really just, that was the question, like, how, what were you thinking? How'd you pull it off? And he just, there was this assumption of wealth, and he has associated himself with people, and it was just assumed. And, you know, the league didn't do a great job in a background check, and everyone thought everyone else was vetting this guy, and he just slipped through the cracks and borrowed half the money, borrowed $80 million, $80 million uh, against the TV rights, and he said it was easier to get that loan than his first car loan for $12,000. So it was during the kind of, I think everyone was partly to blame where, you know, everyone was kind of very freely giving out money in the mid-90s, banks included, and no one really did their due diligence. And he basically owned and operated the team for a, for a short period until Newsday broke the story. And he was probably within a week of pulling it all off, and probably there were different points along the way where he could have also kind of partnered up with someone. But I think he wanted to pull it off and not have to give up any of the team. He tried to develop the rights, the land rights around the Coliseum. But really interesting movie, and you know, you, there, you go back and forth between rooting for him and kind of being disgusted, and I think that's what a good film, um, you know, kind of challenges you with. Well, given that you've produced uh, narrative films that, uh, you know, Invincible and Secretariat that all uh, are based in the sports world, how is it different producing a film that was nonfiction? Yeah, you know, it's our first, uh, you know, first time into documentaries. You know, I love the 30 for 30 series and, you know, we have an overall deal at Disney, so there's that synergy there. And, you know, Connor Shell and Dan Silver from ESPN reached out to our company and said, you know, we should be doing more. Why don't you guys look for uh, for a documentary to do and look at the documentaries we that we currently have to see if we could develop, you know, a, a feature film around it. So it was that trying to look at that synergy in that way. So. Um, I actually think that Big Shot could be a, a feature film, and I think it's a doc is a great way to put to shed some light on a story that is otherwise unknown, and it kind of creates almost like an IP. And uh, you know, good example. I also produced Miracle, and there was a great documentary about that that HBO did. And uh, what it did is just showed how great a story can be, and and you know it. In that case, you knew the story, but it just became more relevant. You know, even with Invincible, uh, that story had been around since 1976, and um, Monday Night Football had done a little, a little bumper piece for about five minutes leading into the game that that kind of talked about the, you know, the movie Rocky, and, and that there was a real life Rocky named Vince Papali. So that little piece kind of, be, you know, got awareness to a story. So I think it's always great, you know, and hopefully after this film, people will see what a great story it can be. And that's, you know, my ultimate aim is to maybe make a feature film about this. And who would play John in the feature film? Good question. Uh, I have You're working with John Hamm on McFarland. Yes. No, I think more like Jonah Hill. I mean, that's my personal favorite. Wow, yeah. uh, he's, you know, of that age. And, and, you know, I think you want someone more unassuming because John Spano was kind of that unassuming guy. He wasn't, you know, the tall, handsome. He was kind of a, 
you know, a, a kind of under the radar looking guy. And I think it just added to the what he almost pulled off. Uh, well, it's the American dream. And I think that that's so closely attached to sports. And it always has been specifically for America from the time of Babe Ruth, who was just, you know, a good old kid who picked up a baseball bat and was damn good at it. So for you, um, you know, why are you fascinated with exploring that American dream? Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's it's like the darker side of an American dream with, with uh, you know, with Big Shot. I mean, he wanted to own a, a franchise, and it was like he wanted to pursue the American dream, and he had a love for hockey, and, you know, he admittedly kind of, you know, went about things in a, in, in a bit of a nefarious way, but I think everyone will be like, man, he went for it, and even at the end of the film, he's like, you know what, my dad even said, hey, you, you, you went for it and you failed, but at least you went for it, and, uh, you know, I think there's that that interesting juxtaposition of you know, like, do, do you root for this guy or do you not? Do you, you know, so I think it's all the things that, that make a good documentary and even feature film. So um, working with Kevin Connolly, uh, I know that you guys got a lot of people to openly talk about their relationship with John and their role in the scandal. So from your standpoint, I know Kevin was the one, you know, interviewing them, but were there people that gave you a hard time that refused to work with you? What were some of the challenges uh, on the production end? Yeah, no, everyone was pretty good about sitting down and talking, uh, and it was interesting because you, you didn't know what their you know, recollection was, and it was interesting hearing different sides of the story. I think the most difficult person probably was John Spano. I mean, I don't think it's something he really wanted to you know, bring up and, and go over again. It, it didn't end well for him, but I think it was very cathartic as well that he got to, to instead of having a documentary that examined his life and, and he couldn't respond to, I think he gave a good account of his own perspective on things and right or wrong I think it, it helped give that film a balance that it was needed you know he obviously pissed off a lot of people but again you know I think he did it with with an eye toward helping that franchise and building a winner um, so so given that uh, you focus a lot on sports stories and you want to turn this into a narrative film what are some of the pockets of American sports that you still want to explore uh, and produce you know uh, to me, just interesting stories that can come out of anywhere. I mean, there's, you know, ESPN's such a great kind of feeder system for feature films. And, you know, uh, you know the ones that we're looking at right now are like the, the Valvano story and, um, and another f uh, idea about this. Uh, uh, there was an ESPN kind of uh, expanded piece called Carry On about this young uh, boy who lost his leg and, and found a friendship with another wrestler in high school and, and how uh, a woman, uh, a female uh, ESPN producer, Lisa Fenn, uh, built a relationship from an initial piece she did in 09 to basically adopting these boys uh, three or four years later. So, you know, just to me, uh, the stories that inspire me, you know, and, and there, there's a lot out there and we get uh, a, lot of, a lot of stories coming into us. And I think for us, it's like, how do you distinguish what's a movie and what's not a movie? And uh, that's, you know, what's enjoyable doing for us is mm -hmm. to find great stories and trying to get them on the big screen. Now, when does the film Big Shot premiere on the 30 for 30 f and on ESPN? Yeah, I think October 22nd, Tuesday. Um, you know, this is the season where they kind of roll one out each week. And, you know, so you'll probably in another week start hearing a lot of ads. And, you know, Kevin will be doing a lot of press. I think there's a lot of interest there for him and the story and, and the type of story it is. It, it's not really traditional to the series and I think everyone's really really happy at ESPN and and uh, I think the uh, the people here will also enjoy the film. Great. Well thank you. Congratulations. Thank you,